Welcome everyone to today's show where we will be talking about bonding and WANs. I have a multi-WAN right here. And this is what a lot of people are like, oh, well, this is really cheap and it doesn't have a monthly cost. And look, I can plug in three different uh, internet connections and there's a USB port too. I'm, I'm good. Um, except bonding is very, very different than a multi-WAN switch or router. Very different. And we'll get into that. And let me just get a couple terms out of the way. WAN is Wide Area Network, otherwise known as where your internet comes from. LAN is your local area network, which is another word for your stuff. So you have like on this device right here, let me go to side view right here. No, this one. Um, this one has LAN LAN 2, LAN 3, LAN 4, or WAN 1, WAN 2, WAN 3, WAN 4. You can go into this and set this up how you intend to use it. So if you want to have one, one wide area network, but four locals, that's fine. If you want to have four wide area networks and one output to your stuff, that's how you configure it. This is a user configurable box. And people think, oh, if I hook up four different sources of internet, then I'm going to be using all of those for streaming. And the sad part with a wide area uh, multi-WAN device like this is that it doesn't do bonding. Bonding is a very, very specific thing that multi-WAN devices don't do. These have um, load balancing and they have failover and things like that. So let's talk about that. Uh, load balancing is you have multiple connections to the internet, multiple WANs. Load balancing means, oh, this one is going to share data with that computer. This one is going to share data with that computer. Or you could have it divvy up by task. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm watching some video come in over um, the internet. That's going to be on port one. Port two is going to be my uh, connection to another office. Port three is going to be a connection to the bank. It's dividing up. Um, it's balancing your load across multiple things, but each individual task gets one connection. So if you were to stream on a multi-WAN device like this, and you have four connections, your single stream is going to be assigned to one port. It's not going to be spread across four, one port. It's balancing the load. And then anything else you wanted to do is going to be put on other things, balancing the load across multiple things. It's not going to take your stream and spread it out. Um, failover is another thing where you can have your primary connection, which is, you know, you pay for your internet connection to your office, and then you use your cellular, cellular modem as your failover. What that means is it's never going to use the cellular modem unless the primary connection dies. You find this a lot in businesses. You know, you go to any chain retail store, they will have a load balancing router like this with the primary connection that they pay for to the building here. Then they will have a secondary connection so that if the internet cable down the street gets cut because of construction or something, they can still register your transaction. They can still make money because it's going to jump right over to the cellular connection and process those transactions over cellular. Now, cellular is not as reliable. It may not be as fast and it may not be able to handle the same amount of throughput as the wire connection, but it will still help get the job done and it will fail over to the other source. And you can have multiple failovers. That's what failover means. Bonding is like playing cards. Bonding is where I have a deck of cards, you shuffle them out. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 three four, 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 five, 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 five. You give out the cards and they're going out different paths. Now, each one of those cards has to be numbered and it's a tiny little packet of data. 
And all of those paths, all of those cards will travel different routes through the internet and everything. And then they will all arrive somewhere else. That somewhere else is a debonding. I call it debonding. I've never seen this used anywhere else, but I just made it up. Uh, they call it, I call it a debonding server. So it takes all of these packets that come in. And like we said, with cellular, cellular may be a little bit slower than the wired connection. So the wired connections, one, seven, nine, 15, those packets come in fast. And I'm waiting for two, three, four. I'm waiting for these other packets to show up. And then when they all get there, this server, because it knows it's a debonding. It, that's what it's built for. It takes these packets that are arriving out of order, puts them back in the order they're supposed to be in, and then sends this stream off to YouTube or wherever you wanted it to go. And debonding has a cost because somebody has to program that server to do that. Somebody has to put a physical computer there to do it and connect it to an expensive internet connection and maintain the operating system and do updates and all of that has cost. They have to provide power to it. They have to provide cooling to it and maintenance and battery backups and things like that. So all of that has a cost. And if you have, if you buy a box and it says has bonding and you don't pay for the bonding, I'm wondering how that is even possible because Somebody has to pay to maintain that server on the other side. It's almost, I've never heard of real bonding being free. <laughs> so that's the three differences between um, load balancing and failover and bonding. And we'll get into some bonding solutions in a minute. Let's continue with the questions. Tell Nika and Bondix, forget the rest. The best I ever tried, not use my solo pro since I got this. And yes, we're going to get into the live view solo. Um, and that is a great solution. I have not heard of that. And I'm sure there are many things that I don't know about. I'm going to mention some of the big ones, but there are going to be lots and lots of solutions around the world that I am not totally aware of, but I'm going to explain the process and the concept with a couple examples. Mike Sabatini says, I'd like to know about those small USB modems that plug into the Ultra. And yes, uh, that is one of the easiest ways to get more internet into your device. Um, these are little modems. This is a little ZTE modem right here, and it's got a regular USB-A plug. I haven't seen many of these with USB-C plugs just yet, but USB-A plug. And if you pop off the cover, your SIM card, which actually this actually has a SIM card in it. SIM card goes right in here and you can actually put a micro SD and use this as sort of like a little memory stick too. So it's, it's kind of like both. And on the stream tech channel, there is a video about how to set up your ZTE modem. Cause I find these to be very, very reliable and people have had a lot of success with these. There's also this, uh, 4g Wi-Fi modem. So this is actually, when you plug it in, it gets power and it will actually do Wi-Fi from this device, which is a really great idea. However, I could never actually get it to work. The nice thing with these is, these can plug into a router like this. This is the GL INET router, and you can have it connect directly to this as your WAN, and then you can reconfigure the WAN port as just another LAN port. Make sure that you set these up, because if you don't pre-set up the ZTE modem, and you have to store settings on here and tell it, you know, what the preferences are and to use roaming if you need to or, or you know whatever it is to make sure that it knows the sim understands the sim and the bands and you know 4g 3g lte and all that stuff make sure you set all that up so that when you plug it into the dumb device that's not going to set it up it just works that's how it that's how what you have to do for the yolo box and other devices because you're not going to be able to configure this at all on the yolo box do 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 I've got quite a few connection issues with my ZTE dongle with my GL INET slate. Okay, so that was the example that I just used, and he's saying um, this is the GL INET. Uh, you have the AX1800, I think that's the one I got. No, I have the 1300. So yours is newer than mine. So they've got a lot, these keep coming out. This is called the slate. It's got these little, I don't know, like bunny ears that fold up and it's rounded and it, and it packs really well. And it runs off of USB. It's got this little 
USB-C for power. Yeah, yeah, that's USB-C for power, USB for internet connection, and then you can, in the menus, configure what these do. I got two LANs and one WAN, or it could be two WANs, or it could be, you know, whatever you want it to be. And then over here, there's different mode settings and buttons hidden on each side, and then, of course, there's the trans flash on the other side. So they kind of hide those over there, too. You know, I, I just had a... Uh, um, couple of these modems here let me go to the side camera i have got a t-mobile modem which is uh one that's in uh the us and it has power and it is wi-fi so this is a very basic kind of modem then we have this verizon modem that's the, the verizon sim on top i just keep it outside and i can't take the battery out but the nice thing with this is it has two little ports on here that you can kind of see and I can put external antennas on this so it could reach further, not to the tower, the close tower that everybody else is using. I can use directional antennas and reach to that other tower. And then I can use the USB-C out for data as well as Wi-Fi. And then you have the Netgear makes a series of squarish modems like this. This is the M1. And it's sold as a 4x4 MIMO router, meaning multiple in, multiple out. It can connect to four different bands at the same time, and it is touted as delivering one gigabit down. But at the same time, I had this with AT&T. You can see the little AT&T logo on there. And AT&T limited it to one connection. So... What the hardware is capable of may not be what the carrier allows you to do. The key benefit to a router like this is the Ethernet connection right here. Ethernet, more so than the USB connection, I can take this thing and I've done events in a church. I'm deep inside this big church. There's lots of people there. There's people outside. I needed to make sure I had a reliable cellular connection for streaming. So I took this little box, I put a magnet on the bottom here, and I put it on top of a 20-foot pole outside of the church where it could reach with these, you know, with all the antennas that are around the surface here. It could have a reliable connection much better than if I tried to use it inside the church among everyone else. It was up high, it could see multiple towers, it could get a reliable connection, and then I ran the Ethernet cable a hundred feet all the way into me and plugged it into my local router where that would connect it to all my gear. And that is a very handy feature is that the ethernet will run way further than the USB. Having different hotspots, one's on Wi-Fi, one's on USB-C, one's on ethernet, and this one as well, it's a four by four, but if you wanted to plug in directional antennas into the two ports here, it would be a two by two but those directional antennas can really amplify your signal to very distant antennas. There are software packages out there and websites and apps that will tell you where the towers are for different carriers. So you can be around a stadium and say, okay, here's two towers. Uh, those are gonna be totally full. I'm gonna take my antennas and aim them in a completely different direction to a much further tower that these people aren't gonna be able to reach very easily. And I'm gonna have a reliable connection to that tower, which is not overwhelmed with thousands of people. So that is um, a way that you can leverage existing hardware and a bit of know-how to make sure that you're still able to get a connection, even though there's a whole lot of competition. Next one up is Peplink. Peplink is a very well-known company that does that creates streaming hardware, and they offer this um, fusion speed fusion service uh, that right here that enables you to connect multiple connections and use them all for your connection to the internet. The cool thing about Peplink over, I think almost over most of these other services is that it's bonding for everything. So if you had a, if this was a Peplink device and I had my 
um, Ethernet out for uh, my data, then what it's giving me is it's giving me bonded data for everything. So if I needed to use a, uh, an app and go into the cloud and change a setting, or if I wanted to view the download stream, or if I needed to send a text message, or if, for all of that, it's all bonded. It's all extra reliable. That's the cool thing about bonding everything in a separate device and then handing that bonded data over to your um, streaming device. And Speedify does the same thing. However, Speedify does not sell hardware. Peplink does sell hardware and their service works with their hardware. So they're bonding at my, this end and they have their servers at that end. They have both. Speedify is very different. Speedify allows you to have whatever device you want. And you could have Speedify on that device. You can see Speedify on my personal cell phone. Let's make that a little darker so it's not too blown out. I've got my Wi-Fi and I've got my T-Mobile internal SIM. So it would automatically connect to both of those. All you have to do is tap the button like that. It's going to test the servers, connect and say, boom, there. Now I am bonded and it's going to Atlanta. I can check latency loss and everything. And it is designed for streaming, start live streaming test. You can have, you can, you can set Speedify in a bunch of different modes, like we were talking about the um, failover and everything, you can prioritize. Use the wired connection most of the time because it costs me less. But if you need to include the cellular connection, you can have it do that. You can have it prioritize. You could have it just do failover first one, then the other and things like that. And Speedify is, as we just found out, available, going to be available in the Director Mini, but it's also available internet bonding router helps and tips. And you can see that what they're doing is they're putting Speedify, but they're putting it on hardware. Like this down here is probably a Nook, an Intel Nook computer. And this is a dedicated device where it's got the wireless antennas and it's got multiple ports in the back. And then through the software running on this device, probably Linux, you can say, I've got WAN, 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 LAN, LAN you know, two local area networks or three local area networks and two wide area networks and run it on the hardware of your choice and then have it reach leverage Speedify to, to send those packets out. And then Speedify has the servers on their end to receive the packets, put them back in order and send them along their way. So you're paying for Speedify. You're paying for that debonding service through Speedify. But Speedify also gives you the software to use at the sending end, which is pretty cool as well. So there's that's how Speedify does it. I have tried Speedify running on a Raspberry Pi 4, but it was not very stable. Any recommendation for a low cost software solution for bonding? Um, Speedify is pretty much the low cost bonding solution. However, the Raspberry Pi 4 may not have had enough horsepower to run it. So that's why it may not have been very stable. Also, there are different levels to Speedify. You can just pay for your base level of Speedify or you can pay for a dedicated server that costs more, but it also is more reliable and gives you more processing power. So if it's not stable, that's part of the, proce the processing power on your end and processing power on the other end. Heard a rumor, Alex from Speedify, that they might be integrating with a router manufacturer later this year. That would be a great idea. Speedify and uh, Peplink bond data. They bond any data going through their device. They don't care about what kind of data it is. It's all bonded. And thusly, you're able to have an, an IP phone. You're able to have, you know, a bunch of laptops all accessing the Internet, doing different things. You know, you could be using a cloud server for something. Well, you need a laptop accessing the cloud server through data to be able to administer whatever you need to change and having a bonding device like a Peplink or a Speedify allows you to bond 
anything, you connect to it, as opposed to a live view or a Terra deck, which are only bonding the video that you physically plugged into it. The same thing with the Director Mini or the YOLO box. They have bonding built in, but it is specifically only for the video coming being pushed by that device. I can't use the bonding from my YOLO box for my phone to be able to like go onto YouTube and change a setting. I can't do that. I've read many reports of people having great success and other people having not so great success. And it usually comes down to the people with less success are far away from wherever the server is because there's only a few servers around the world. There's a server in Oceania, there's a server in Europe, there's a server in the US. So if you're in South Africa or if you're in Chile or, or if you're in Australia or something like that, you're far from a local server. Whereas, you know, the, the, person in Australia, they were like, well, this other service has a server in Australia and it was, and it's been great, but they'd want to use the streaming that's in the YOLO box because it's already built in and they don't have to bring an extra device. So, you know, you, you've got that balance between it's convenient, but there's less servers because YOLO is not necessarily a bonding server company, you know, like some other companies, the video people, I just want a box. <laughs> Give me a box that works, which is why the YOLO box and the director mini and things like that just explode in usability because I don't want to have to think about configuring all of this stuff to make it work. You know, it's like the iceberg. We know this much, but everything below it is what the IT expert, the certified IT professional, they know all of this. And we know just enough to figure out how to mess things up. Uh, Director Mini um, now offers um, built-in bonding. So here I have Ethernet plugged in. I've got my Wi-Fi connected. Now the Wi-Fi is actually coming from my cell phone hotspot and the Ethernet is coming from the office connection. And right here it says network bonding and you just tap it on. Look at that. It's as simple as that. Actually, it's not. <laughs> Let's go into the gear icon. We click on network and then you see up here, network bonding. Network bonding is provided by Speedify and it's on right now. But if you click on the gear, you'll see it's Speedify. This is a beta right now. And there's, it gives you a free account by default. But if you sign in, there's different levels of service through Speedify. You can have uh, your basic level of service. Sometimes you can buy a year's worth of service and save a whole bunch of money. Also, there's higher tiers of service. So if you're going to be doing bonding a lot, you can pay for a higher tier of service that gives you a dedicated server and makes the bonding more reliable and more resilient. So that is what I recommend. If bonding is something you're really going to need, uh, elevate yourself to the higher uh, account status and get that. So you can see right here, here, server, the fastest server. I don't think you, oh, you can click on it and you can pick a server in an area. So if you are sort of restricted where you're at, you can pick a server somewhere else. Uh, you can turn encryption on or off. The bonding mode currently is speed, redundant, and streaming. Make sure you set this to streaming because it's a streaming appliance. <laughs> so we're not interested in the fastest speed. What we're interested is is in resiliency. It's not redundant. So redundant would be one and then you could fail over to another one. Streaming means it's sending the packets across both all the time. So we're going to change that to streaming right there. The goal here is not taking these two things and stacking them. The goal is spreading my data across them for redundancy. So if you're streaming and you do bonding, remember, it's not about taking your bandwidth and quadrupling it. It's about making sure that you have the ability to get your signal through. And of course, if you're streaming five megabits a second, then 22 is plenty of headroom over what you're really going to need. And 22 is plenty enough speed and you're not looking to get even more speed. Additional speed doesn't help you. YOLO Live does offer bonding in their YOLO boxes. If you had the Ultra, you've got, you know, two, two slots right here, and those are perfectly suited for plugging in, and it's always the wrong way, plugging in USB modems like that. So that is very handy. Two USB modems and four HDMI inputs, as well as NDI. And that is super flexible with all of these ports on this rather large tablet. The Director Mini 
is a much smaller tablet, so it does not have as much space for ports, but it does have two USB ports on the Director Mini. I can't show it to you because it's wired up and it's doing today's show. So here in network settings, you can see I've got my Wi-Fi, and then there's a built-in network test. You click on the network test, and it's going to test this fast. Now, unfortunately, the main number it gives you is deceiving. 280, oh my goodness. <laughs> it's 280 down, which if you're trying to stream means nothing. You have to click that little box that says show more info. And then down the bottom there, actually, let me put me over this. Here we go. This is the number you're really looking at. Your upload speed at 20 megabits. And then there's also over here, like uh, your latency is 16 milliseconds and loaded. And then if you continue over here and open the settings, uh, measure loaded latency during upload. Yes, show up, always show all metrics. Save the config for this device, save. And now it will come up a little bit differently. And let me make it bigger. You will see 290, but it's going to come up with this data right here. And it's also going to use the loaded 19 megabits for the upload speed, which is currently 20, 23, 22, 21. Yeah, like I said, is it, the, my internet here, I pay for 35 up and it usually I get 20. Come on, come on. It's still testing the upload speed. 20, it's slowing down, 21. And that is the number. So I would not ever want to try to upload at a bit rate higher than 10. And remember, the YOLO box has the nice feature in that when it does multicasting from inside the YOLO box, it sends one stream and then it's split out in the cloud at the YOLO live servers. So if you're doing five megabits and you're going to three different destinations, you're still only sending five megabits. And then it goes five megabits out. And then in the cloud, the YOLO live server sends it to three different destinations. You're not sending two five megabit streams. Whereas on the director mini, if you are sending two different streams, that's two different sets of data. So five and five, it's 10. So that's, that's different as well. This one is Core made by Teradek. And I actually have an account with Core because I have used Core on shows. Let me make sure this is set up correctly. And I have used Core to bond multiple connections for parade events because we did not want to rely on cellular but we wanted to have cellular as a backup in case the hard line from a building, you know, 100 meters away got broke on its way to our, our truck, production truck. We had two cellular modems as well. One I extended, I put on top of the truck and one was inside the truck. And in so doing, we had all of those things connected through core. So we're using Teradek hardware at the sending end, which is sending it out and Teradek hardware at the receiving end and their software which is right here called core now it, i don't have any of those destinations set up but you can see that you you know you can set up your um this is my main dashboard uh your quality of service services destinations the different servers you know because you can have it do transcoding and things like that so you can add servers to do certain things like that and that is core let me show you how i used core by going here. So this was a production truck. We were doing a parade uh, that we do every year at Thanksgiving. It's the Parade of Lights. And um, there on the right, you can see the I'm using ShareLink, which has been rolled into Core now. And I'm using a Teradek Video Go. And this is the data that I'm sending. Let's get a better look at what's going on there. This is the hardware. You can see it's it's just a simple little box. And it takes video in bonds that video across multiple connections and that's it so i can't use the bonding for anything else except that single video stream i can't use it to check the connection i can't use it uh, for anything else messaging it's solely for the video that i'm sending that's all it does and here you can see there uh, i'm using um an ipad tablet to look at the stream assess the stream and at the bottom is a chart that shows me what is being used and to what extent. And then we can look a little closer at that 
right here. So the orange line up at the top here is total. Down here, you can see I have three connections. I have my wireless connection, which is blue, my USB 2, which is green, and my USB 1, which is pink. And all three of those together give me, give me the total bandwidth available. So it's, it's technically load balancing, but it's bonding. It's using all three of them all at the same time, specifically for my one video stream. It's it's sending them out across all those different connections. And you can see at the bottom there, I've been live for 22 minutes and 50 seconds. This is the modem that is attached to it with the two cellular antennas. They call this a node modem. And this is the one modem. Over here is the other modem, but it's outside the truck via a long USB cable. And then right here is the Ethernet connection that AT&T provided, which was reliable through the whole event. Nobody broke it. But if it did break, these two connections would immediately have been elevated in use and the stream would not have been broken, which is the whole point of bonding. We didn't want to lean on the cellular too heavy because there's a large in-place audience that are also going to be on their phones. So that's why you need to have multiple cellular connections if you're going to do something where there's going to be a big audience because they're all on the same tower that you're on and you have no priority over them. You know, you're all trying to reach the same tower, you know, trying to access the same amount of data and the tower only has so much data or it can only accept so much data. I, I was able to see the fact that it was always using all the connections. I was able to assess what was going on. I was confident in the fact that should a couple kids outside see the cable running through the trees and they're climbing the trees and the cable were to break, I was confident in the fact that I was good. I had two more connections. You know, I had backup and extra backup. I had two more connections to the internet so the stream would continue to go through even if they did something stupid outside and broke the cable. LiveView do their own mobile modems with two eSIMs in a unit that was really useful for in real life video streaming. You can buy get bonded data plans from them using different cellular service. Yes, LiveView is the other, you know, big um, bonding s provider and they primarily deal with uh, broadcast or news stations and things like that. And they have a lot of, they have their own bonding hardware, small packs, rack mount units, and things like that. When we did the parade, we actually did use Live View to go from a camera that was at the start of the parade, three miles away, to the internet. And then we had the receiver, the debonding unit, in the rack, in the truck. So they didn't go somewhere else. They went from point A to us. And then we debonded that and connected it in so we could have somebody way down there getting the start of the parade, you know, the mayor speaking and things like that. And it's, and it's, you know, with all the people around, we needed to have the bonding. It came directly to us in the truck with the debonding server, providing us a SDI connection right into our um, switcher so that we're able to do it. One of the other really interesting things that uh, LiveView offers is this LRT. I'm going to highlight this one part because packet ordering, that is common in everything of bonding. Otherwise, the receiving device doesn't know what order the packets go in. Packet ordering is, that's, that's like water. You know, you have to have that. Dynamic forward error correction. Some bonding does that, some bonding doesn't. That's extra packets, just in case a packet gets lost, it doesn't have to resend it because it's already got a little bit of extra data. And then acknowledge and resend. So this is resending a packet that, oh, I didn't get 14, send me 14 again. You know, so you get that. But this last part, the adaptive bitrate encoding is actually some special sauce that I haven't seen used elsewhere in that if the data rate is just getting hammered, you know, you're, you're on three different cellular networks, but you're at a soccer game and there's 50,000 people and you are just getting hammered. What LRT does is the receiver tells the transmitter to lower the bit rate, to lower the resolution, to make sure that the stream can still go through. So you may have started sending a 1080p at five megabits, but if it gets really bad, in order to keep the stream good, what it's going to do is the receiver is going to communicate back to the encoder and say, go down to 720p at 2 megabits. 
1.5 megabits. You know, it's going to make sure that the stream can get through through this adaptive bitrate encoding. It's going to adjust the encoder. It's going to tell the encoder to do something else. It's not going to it's not just moving packets. It's dynamically adjusting your actual encoding to make sure it can fit within the available bits because it knows. It says, well, listen, I only have three megabits. I was trying to send five. I only have three. Well, switch down the 720p and make it work. So this uh, adaptive bitrate encoding can really help if you're in a situation where it is just awful for trying to get your signal through. You can see right there, there's a Solo Pro uh, this th this is their device at the top of the screen. Oops, there it is. That one in the middle is theirs. And that little box takes the video in, SDI or, or HDMI, and you can connect multiple modems and Ethernet, and it will bond over whatever you got and will send it to um, their server, which then you have to reach out through the cloud through another connection to be able to like set up your destinations and everything. And again, you can get that at the StreamTech curated store on Video Guys. So if you follow the link in the descriptions, that will take you right here and they have that available if you want something that has the LRT capability. One last one that I am going to mention is also uh, very interesting. KiloView has bonding encoders. KiloView does not do debonding. They just sell bonding hardware. They, you can buy a box that you can put on your camera that does bonding. Not this one, but another box. Um, but what they do offer for free is the software. And you set up the software on your server where you want it to. You set up the debonding server. You can set it up in the cloud. You can set it up in an office at work. You can set it up at home. You can set up the debonding server wherever you want. And it's free. It's free in that. Remember those costs that I talk about in the beginning? You have to have the computer and you have to have the power and you have to have the internet connection and then and the maintenance time and the expertise and the uninterruptible power supply and, and all of that. You're providing all that. It has a cost, but you're absorbing all that cost so that you're not paying anybody else for it. And if you use bonding a lot, looking at something like this can really pay off because it's rolled into I and mean, your office has already got an internet connection. Your office already has a computer room with cooling and power and UPS and everything. And so adding a computer to do just this could really pay off because then you're not paying an extra cost to a third party for all this extra debonding service. So KiloView is, has a very interesting way of, of doing this. Now, this page about how to install it is actually quite lengthy. Deployment steps, and you got to go in the terminal, and um, then you got to like connect the two devices so they know where they are. You got to open the ports and everything. So it is uh, not for the faint of heart. It is not turnkey. You are doing it all. It is available for those who have the IT expertise to be able to make that happen. KiloView has that unique offering where they have bonding encoders, again, just for video. And they give you the bonding software that you set up on your own. And you can use it as much as you want because they built the software. It's just you're providing the actual computer, the hardware, the maintenance, the upkeep, the install time. And you know time is money and it's going to take you some time to get it set up and working properly. So you're paying for that through other ways, just not dollars. I recommend that you have at least double the tested data rate of what you want to stream at if you are going to stream. So if you want to stream at four megabits, which is how I typically do these live streams, four megabits, I would say my minimum, every single time I test it, it can never go below eight. I find that to be a good Buffer. This is where you set how much you're going to do at what data rate. So at 1080, I could go up to 8 megabits per second. 
which, because I have 20, eight would be fine. I typically do the streaming shows at four megabits at 1080p, 30 on the YOLO seems to look just fine. And that is a decent data rate. If you're doing 720, you'll find that 720 tops out at two megabits on the Pro. The Ultra may have different settings. I'm using, I'm just using a Pro here for demonstration purposes. And so you set what works for you within the confines of making sure that you have enough headroom at, over top so that you can reliably push that stream through because data always tends to vary upon, upon what else is going on in the area. Well, I hope that this has helped people understand that your multi-WAN router, it's not the same. Multi-WAN is not the same thing as bonding across multiple different hotspot connections. As always, I look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, thanks for watching.